All right, here we go. Dr. Wesley Muhammad, welcome to Vlad TV. Man, I'm honored. I'm very honored by the invitation. Happy to be here. I appreciate like, you. Appreciate likewise, your man. Thank you so much for coming. So let's talk about your backstory. Um, what led you to the Nation of Islam? Um, the determination that I was tired of being confused, thinking I know, and then finding out from every new fact that I didn't know. So I determined to toss out all beliefs and all disbeliefs I had and read and study everything. And wherever that study would lead me, that's where I would be. Well, that study led me to the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam under the Honorable Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. Well, originally you were Christian. I was Christian, yes. Now, at what age did you start to question your Christianity? Well, it wasn't, you know, like most black children born in Christian households, the religion is that of our parents. <laughs> You know, we just grow up with it. So we don't take it serious. I began taking any interest in it at all. Only in my sophomore, junior year in high school. Um, and I just started reading the Bible, um, really, to be honest, because my mother forced me to work in my the family gas station during the summer and it was profoundly boring for me and there happened to be a bible there so to pass some of that time i started reading it but as reading while reading it questions came up um in my mind and i sought answers and um, those whom i questioned um, could not give satisfactory answers so i'm led from one person to another and ultimately faithfully but faithful in a good sense i was led to a local middle school teacher who moonlighted if you will as an african studies expert and i was led to him and he he shared a great many things with me, Vlad, um, some of which were really too heavy for me at the time. Um, what he revealed caused me to toss all religion out, period. Um, I was angry at religion and angry at the idea of God. So I threw the baby out with the bathwater and became an atheist instantly. And I was a bitter, arrogant atheist for a good two years. Okay. Now, was part of that pushback to Christianity, the imaging of Jesus Christ, you know, being portrayed as a white person when in that area in the Middle East there really were no black, you know, white people in that area? Right. Part of it, the visceral, my visceral reaction to or against religion and Christianity in particular first was upon learning one that historically speaking, Jesus never taught it. Jesus never taught Christianity, not that prophet who walked the streets of Galilee uh, 2,000 years ago. And yes, as you correctly stated, Vlad, that one 2,000 years ago was not white. And we can say that not only because the anthropological evidence indicates that the people of that area at that time could not have been white, but we can say emphatically that the Jesus of 2,000 years ago was black. The earliest description that has been reconstructed of him has him uh, very dark skin with nappy hair and a very scraggly beard. So the imagery of the white Christ, which is white supremacy in religious garb, that certainly um, was a factor, but what offended me the most, Vlad, 
and what's what really produced my visceral reaction towards religion and Christianity in particular was learning that I had been lied to. That really hurt me. It, it, it angered me that I had been lied to in the name of religion because Jesus did not teach what the church teaches today as Christianity. And then to find out the role of the popes, the so-called vicar of Christ, the role of the popes in sanctifying the African Holocaust of enslavement, to find out that popes blessed slave ships such as the slave ship named Jesus that brought our people here to the shores of North America. That angered me. And that was really the source of my visceral reaction toward religion and Christianity in particular. But the imagery of which you speak is very germane and critical. That white Christ is the agency that glued and glues black people to our slave masters long after the physical chains were legally removed from our wrists. That white Christ is the mental chain that forever binds us to the institution of enslavement in America. Right, because when you look at historically, when you look at the black church and the black preacher, the black preacher was the first black upper class because that's what the slave masters used to control the other blacks. Yes. By, by giving a certain amount of power to the black preacher to push this image of a white Jesus to all of his people. And in return, he became the powerful one in the community. Yes. And they still serve that role today. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the black preacher was his number one enemy. And while my teacher, the Honorable Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan, is welcomed in church across the world and he goes in churches and gets the love and reaction from black Christians the same as he gets from us, his black Muslim followers in the mosque. So we have friendships, Vlad, today with black pastors. We have friendships and relationships with black churches, but that does not deny the fact that the black church during slavery and today has been the main vehicle through which our former slave masters maintain control of their slaves. That is a fact. And by teaching a slave doctrine, see, Vlad, I said Jesus did not teach Christianity. We, or I, and we reject the white man's Christianity, but we don't reject Jesus or the teachings of Jesus. We love and follow the teachings of Jesus, we just understand that he did not teach what is today called Christianity. He taught freedom, justice, and equality. The, cheat, the, the church today, the black church, teaches a slave-making religion, and that's the problem. What do you mean by a slave-making religion? Yes, yes. Two, two of if Islam has five pillars, the slave religion of the so-called Negro has pillars as well to this religion. And the number one pillar, Vlad, is the belief in a mystery God. The belief that God is a spook, a formless spirit, when in fact we know that God is a man but by teaching that God is a spirit, that is part of the process of making a slave. Because by making God so abstract and so untouchable, so unrelatable, 
then you can come in subtly and tailor make the so-called Negro's idea of God. And what our slave masters did was put himself as God in the mind of the so-called Negro. The other aspect of the slave religion, Vlad, we are taught in the church to expect the reward for our hard labor on this earth, hard labor for white people. Our religion told us to expect any reward or recompense for that when we die in the sky. So slavery is a slave making religion because while white people have built and continue to build in their religion, however it's defined, inspires them to build heaven on earth, inspires them to seek mastery of the whole universe. The extent to seek mastery of the whole universe. So the United States is trying to colonize Mars now because they know that they have so corrupted the air the water, the land of earth. They are hoping to seed and colonize Mars. But white folks, natural religion, inspires them to build heaven and paradise while they live on earth, while the so-called Negro in the church is taught to help the white man build his heaven on earth, but expect your dividends Expect your paycheck when you die in the sky. That's a slave making religion. Hmm. So so when you say that Christianity focuses on a spiritual God, whereas the nation of Islam focuses on God as a man, like explain that. Yes. Because you, you you hear you hear that, you know, in the in the, the nation of Islam teaching, the five percent teaching of the black man as God. But I think a lot of outsiders like myself don't don't quite understand what that means. Yes. Yes. So what I said, actually, Vlad, is not that Christianity focus on God as spiritual versus the nation of Islam who focuses on God as a man. We in the nation of Islam recognize the spiritual nature of God. What I said was the slave making religion of Christianity teaches that God is a spirit, a spook. That's different from God as spiritual. God as a spirit independent of body. God as an immaterial, totally abstract being. That is a falsehood. That is a falsehood uh, from the perspective of the Bible, both Hebrew, so-called Old Testament and Greek New Testament for John the book of John doesn't say, as King James's um, translator said, God is a spirit, and he who worships him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In the Greek, Vlad, there is no indefinite article, A. And the word translated as spirit is pneuma, is God is pneuma. And pneuma actually, in the Greek, is a material substance. God as spiritual has a material substance to his reality. And we in the nation of Islam accept, not just believe, accept the reality of the fact that God is a spiritual reality manifest in a material reality. For he created a material world and through that material world, he manifests himself. 